into the future. Good morning. Good to the good. 120 minutes. Louis Largent here with you for another 120 minutes on MTV. The best, the absolute most in alternative music video every Sunday night at midnight and 11 central. Tonight we got Fishbone, Frank Black, New Order, Peter Murphy, Dramarama, and Velocity Girl. Brand new ones from Sugar, The Auteurs, Tool, and the long arrayed return of LA punk legends X. We're 20 minutes away from Brett and Bernard from Suede. They're going to be here. And right now we're going to kick off the show with ex Pixie Frank Black and his cover of the Brian Wilson song, Hang On to Your Ego. And Frank told us about an early version of the song he recorded for John Peel's BBC radio program in England. Into the future. Gentleman Peter Murphy is on the way along with Velocity Girl and a brand new video from Tool, one of the bands on Lollapalooza. It's going out on the road this summer. This is MTV's 120 Minutes. I'm Lewis Larchant. This is Brett Anderson and Bernard Butler of the band Suede, who have arrived on these shores with more press than anybody since the Smiths and the Sex Pistols, and we're actually on the cover of uh, of the Melody Maker magazine before you even had a record out. How is this? Uh, how's this? Pr how's this press uh, affected your guys' uh, music making so far? Has this affected you in any way, shape, or form? More press than I've ever seen in my life, almost for a new band. Um, well, as I said in the take earlier, that we had to redo. Uh, right. Um, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> All our songs are about journalism these days. Yeah. No, it's it's nothing to do with it really. We don't really. I don't know how it happened. It wasn't a, a kind of... A, a, we didn't have a kind of, like, a, a huge plan or anything. We just wrote some songs and things, you know. It wasn't kind of strategized like many people think we've been. There was no Malcolm McLaren figure involved with us or anything like that. There was no kind of Svengali or whatever the word is. Right. You know, there was no sort of sugar daddy telling us what to do and telling us what shoes to wear and things. You know, we just we just spent we've just spent most of our lives in a rehearsal room in Hackney, um, writing songs, and and what's come out of it is, is some quite interesting songs, and and people have just decided that, that to to write about it and to and to get excited about us. Have you obliged them pretty well with uh, doing most of what is required in most of the interviews, or have you found that to be a difficult task as it goes along? Um, I mean, in Eng England, we don't do any interviews anymore because it's just. It's just completely pointless because people have read so much about us. They must be bored to death. Do you worry right about the, Do you worry about <clears throat> a, a backlash sometimes ensues after so much press happens? Are, are you worried about that? Um, I think kind of the term backlash is a bit uh, is a bit under is a bit misunderstood. People assume that the press have got this huge amount of power that they can decide when someone's going to be successful and when they're not, I think that's a complete load of rubbish. I think if you're any good and you make good records, then there's only a limited amount of, a, a, amount of things that a few people with pens can do to you, really. It's your fans that buy your records, and if you make good records, you know, that's it, really. So hopefully we make good records. Well, that's what we're concentrating on now. We're forgetting about all, all the kind of peripheral side of it, really. That's, that's what we're obsessed with and what we've always been obsessed with. Well, we'll be talking more with Bernard and Brett later on and checking out their video for Metal Mickey. Right here, the return of the legendary L.A. punk band X. Hey Zeus is the first new studio album in six years from the band, and the lineup is the same as their last album, See How We Are, which came out way back in 1987. Tony Gillickson and original Xers, Xine Cervenka, John Doe, and DJ Bonebreak. And despite what a lot of people thought, the band never officially did break up. Stop playing of their debut album, Copacetic, that is banned from Silver Springs, Maryland, called Velocity Girl, and their video, Audrey's Eyes, here on 120 Minutes. I'm Louis Largent. This is Brett and Bernard from Suede, and uh, just had their debut album out, the most eagerly anticipated debut album since the Sex Pistols, some have called. Do you think it's live up to the expectations set for it? How do you, how do you, how do you view your album now that it's all said and done? It's a body of work. Unobjectively, of course. What do you think? I think it's rubbish. <laughs> Yeah, I think your bits are rubbish on it. I think I'm good on it. No, I think your bits are rubbish. Oh. No, I mean, you know, it's pr probably the record I listen to the most, really. You listen uh, to your own record? Yeah. yeah. How often would you say you listen to it? Uh, most every days. day, probably. Really? Yeah, we love our records, we do. I mean, I can't, I can't, there's a sort of, I can't understand this mentality of people that say, oh, I can't listen to my own record. 
It's, this must be something lacking if you can't listen to it. Um, I think the, the test of when you've kind of written a good song is that you just you keep playing it over and over again, even if it's yours. It doesn't you sicken you. You have to try and detach yourself from it. That's the best bit, from it, bit about it. If you try and um, imagine that you haven't, it's not your own record and you just listen to a great record and then you can just sort of sit back and listen to it and then suddenly dawns on you that it's your record. That's a really nice feeling. Wow. But, but, if, yeah. it's, but if it's a rubbish record, then, then you get stuck. Yeah, you just get lost in it sometimes. I really like that. I mean, you know, just there's just the occasional track that on our on our album that it kind of drags me in, like a, kind of not well, like a piece of theatre. You know, when you're watching a film, when you're watching a film with subtitles, and you suddenly realise that you're not conscious that there's subtitles, and it's kind of like that. It sort of takes you in, and you become part of it, like sort of being a member of a play or something. And that's a really nice feeling when you're not conscious of of, of why it's good or anything like that, which is the, kind of pretty much the, the feeling you get from listening to anything good, I think. I mean, pleasure is all about achieving a state of, of unconsciousness to a certain extent. We'll be talking more for, uh, with, with Suede coming up right after the break. And uh, right now, a brand new uh, video from one of the bands on Lollapalooza 93. This is uh, Tool coming up after the break. Stay with us. So <laughs> John Rotten from Public Image Limited, and you're watching 120 Minutes on MTV. You lucky sods. And XX Pistol frontman John Rotten is now the ex Public Image Limited frontman, and now bearing an uncanny resemblance to Bart Simpson. Brett was just uh, remarking a little while ago. He's just split uphill and would begin recording his solo album soon, and he's also written an autobiography, which he claims is going to unveil the truth about all the lies and speculation about the life of the Sex Pistols, who everybody else has written about. Also coming up, we're going to play you the latest from Dramarama. And uh, right here, as I mentioned earlier, this is Brett. That is Bernard from, from Suede. And um, were you guys influenced by the Sex Pistols at all? Were you around when that was all happening? He hated them. I loved them. <laughs> how, how old are you guys? You're 23. I'm 23. It's his birthday, isn't it? I'm 25. So I don't know. I, that, I, I, that was the first record I bought. It's never mind the bollocks. And what year did you buy that in? Were you oh, part I of bought it? it. No, uh, I mean, I was, a, I was a plastic punk, you know. I was one of these sort of sad cases that had the kind of grey stay pressed trousers and school uniform, but sort of like claimed he was a punk. I had a red ski jacket, skiing jacket with a Nagasaki nightmare patch on it. You know, I was one of those sort of people. Um, uh, but I bought it quite late, but it was one of the most thrilling records I'd ever heard in my life. It was incredible. What about you, Bernard? What were, uh, what were the albums that you... Uh, grew up listening to that inspired you as you made your way through adolescence? Um, Closer by Joy Division. Do you know that? Yeah. Um, oh, just things like The Smiths, um, The Jam, uh, who else? Blondie, Parallel Lines, things like that. But not punk. I never, really, never liked it at all. The, the one thing you haven't <coughs> mentioned, um, a lot of, compar a lot of uh, the glam is back, is, uh, is the, the thing that's um, <clears throat> I guess important to your music, and you, even though you mentioned David Bowie, is David Bowie any kind of uh, mm. role model or inspiration, or you're a fan of? Oh yeah, we're massive fans of him. Yeah, but I mean, to kind of to put him down as sort of as being glam is is a sort of horrific um, blinkering of, of his true talent. I think. Really. Do you, do you mean, not you like know, that word? Whole, no, I hate that word. I think it's sort of quite. A, it implies quite a, a kind of vacuous weightlessness um, I think David Bowie had a lot more breadth than that part of his part of his style was kind of caught up in that in that sort of early 70s thing but I don't think we want to emulate that side of him at all what would you describe your band as um, country punks <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs> More of our interview with Brett and Bernard of Suede is coming up later, along with a look at their video for Metal Mickey. Right now, an L.A.-based band called Tool. Their debut album features a guest appearance by none other, none other than Henry Rollins. And Tool actually supported the Rollins band on their tour last year. They're going to be on Lollapalooza, as we mentioned. And this video 
uh, features some great claymation. Check it out, uh, their debut album, from their debut album. I'm Louis Larche, this is Brett and Bernard from Suede, the singer and guitar writer, or guitar player, respectively. How did you guys hook up? Um, pretty randomly, really. It was, an, it was actually through an advert in, in a music paper. And uh, we arranged to meet each other with carnations in our pocket, in our, <laughs> in our lapels, Lower in up. a pub, didn't we? <laughs> no, we didn't. No, we didn't. <laughs> he came to my flat with his guitar, and he was the first of about six million applicants to this to this uh, little thing I put in the enemy. And uh, there didn't seem to be any reason to uh, um, bother with anyone else. When did you know, like, when was the moment you go, this is the guy that I'm going to be playing with, it's going to be in a band that I'm going to be in? I don't know, straight away, I think, really. Is there anything that you said in particular, or just the he way you got I, along? He didn't actually say anything. He was as skinny as me, and I was quite <laughs> impressed by that, because I've never seen someone as skinny as me before. <laughs> And uh, how did uh, and how did you get the the other two members? Um, I've known Matt for for a bit. I knew Matt before I knew Bernard from school and stuff. And Simon just met him in in London, really friend of a friend. All pretty un uncinematic, you know. There's no um, uh, r recountable stories to tell about people being found up trees or anything like that. Not like the isn't there the the Morrissey Johnny Marr story when he actually Johnny Marr actually sought out Morrissey and knocked on his door and said, "Please be in a band with me." Wasn't that the how they? So they say in the books. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. We're gonna take a look at Metal Mickey, which is uh, on the way in just a little bit, and also Drama Rama's latest coming up in just a few. Our MTV's 120 minutes into the future. Back on 120 Minutes, we're here with Suede, Brett, and Bernard, and I want to talk about your album cover. If we can flash that album cover right now for those of you who haven't seen it. Um, are we flashing it? Is it there? Is it there yet? Is it on the screen? Here it comes. There it is. Uh, tell us about the album cover. Um, it's a picture of two women kissing. Um, Pretty much, pretty simply. Um, uh, it was just a beautiful picture that we really liked. Um, all of the um, intellectualising about what it means and stuff really came later. It was something that really glowed. It was like a kind of stained glass window or something. The th original picture was completely different. It was actually a full picture of these two naked women kissing on this wheelchair. And it just was, it was incredibly kind of poetic in a really quite unusual way. We wanted to use that, but the, f the photographer who took it um, thought it would be unsuitable, and so she said that we could use the, just the heads. So we did. And it's not actually been too controversial as the controver there's like a controversial nature to it, but not much has been really made about it, which is, I guess, a really good thing. Uh, I, I mean, there's I'd nothing controversial about it. Uh, <laughs> well, it's just pretty. Yeah, it is pretty, but I mean, we, you know what I mean? We, we, uh, I don't we think we you've been choose, to America yet and been choose, through certain parts of I the know, country. I know, we've been told, yeah. yeah. But, um, we, we didn't choose it because we thought it would be dangerous or something. Yeah. We just chose it. We could have chosen nice, something you know. a lot more dangerous if we'd have, if we'd have t turned our minds to it. Um, it. I mean, there's nothing controversial about two women kissing, really, is there? It's like kind of saying it's, it's, it's controversial about someone eating an ice cream or something like that. It's something that happens every day. Well, I just can't wait for your tour across the United States as you get to some of the remote ends of, uh, of the country and you know, well, you're you'll... You're going to be laughing at us. <laughs> so speaking of Where which... Um, well, I don't want to say because I don't want to diss anybody, as you said uh, earlier, yeah. so we'll let you find out. It's not a very good cool world, world anymore, is it? Yeah. It is. Yes. So you're going to be on, the, you're on tour in the United States so far. You've uh, played like a week's worth of gigs. Um, mm -hmm. You've had, I guess, how have your gigs in England been? I've heard they've been pretty over the top. It, of uh, the the zeal and uh, just hysterical Hysteri hysteria, yeah, <laughs> historical hysteria. It's been, yeah, it's been pretty mad. We've got some in, um, insane and kind of ravenous fans over there, which is brilliant. But I mean, you know, we've encountered a few mad people in in America as well that have been just as just as into us, you know, it's been good. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, Metal Mickey. You already have four videos in the can, and this is the first one that we have, and it seems kind of old to you guys because it's been out for a long time. Mm. I mean, uh, this, is, this is actually the second video we ever made, so it's a bit, looking back on it, we kind of cringe a bit, and we do look like a load of old dogs in it. <laughs> and this was, what, a year ago? <laughs> yeah. No, even that. Yeah. I think we were a load We just of got better dogs. at making videos. 
it's not the song or anything, it's just the video, actually making the video is a bit difficult when you have to ask a musician to make a piece of film, which is what you have to do. It just, it's a completely different world. So and, you to, and you have to learn it from scratch. It's just I like the way the videos are, are kind of, just seem to be such a, an afterthought, you know, you, you spend ages making a song and then you put two seconds making this video just to accompany it. So it's should a visual we representation. Should we caution people to close their eyes and listen to the song if they hadn't heard before because this video is... If they like this, I'm good person. it. <laughs> okay. Here it is. Uh, thanks for coming by. Good luck on your... Thanks, uh, Lewis. Sure. Cheers. Brett. Bernard. Thank you. Are you good? And here's Metal Mickey from Swain. It's How Could I Be Wrong from the Auteurs, the final video on 120 Minutes tonight. Write us and let you know what you thought of the show tonight. The address is 1515 Broadway, 24th floor, New York, New York, 136. I want to thank uh, Brett and Bernard from Suede for stopping by. Very nice guys. And uh, speaking of nice guys, one of the classiest acts in rock, Bob Mold of Sugar, is going to be here on 120 next Sunday at midnight, 11 Central. So be here for that. And don't forget our friend Kennedy, weeknights at 12 for Alternative Nation. Thanks for watching. For 120 Minutes, I'm Lewis Largent. Bye.